Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about dealing with clients in the world of web design and development. Now this is geared more towards you guys that are either running your own business or you're doing freelancing work, but it should also apply to those of you that are working for someone else, but you, you also have to deal with clients directly. Alright, so I've never really worked for a big company, but those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I've ran, I ran my own business for around five years or so. I had a commercial space, I started with computer repair, but I ended up doing mostly web development. Now I worked with some local clients, but most of my clients were all across the world and they found me through Google or something like that. Um, and at the time I was working mostly with content management systems like WordPress, Joomla. It allowed me to create dynamic websites in a short amount of time and also give the client a back end where they could go and edit their content. All right, so I'm going to give you some situations that you might run into and at the same time give you some pointers that may help you out. And I will warn you that I will be a little negative and harsh because honestly, uh, there's people that are just really irritating. But just know that the majority of the clients are very helpful, respectable, and fair. I'm specifically talking about those people who are very difficult to work with or work for. All right, so one of the biggest reasons that I moved to online teaching from doing client work is because it was extremely stressful working with difficult people. Now, some of this depends on you and how you're able to handle it, but for me, I've always had an issue dealing with people in general. I get social anxiety, uh, I can have a chip on my shoulder sometimes, so it was really challenging for me. Now, if you're really good at communication and you tend to enjoy talking to people, um, you're not going to have as much of a problem as someone like me. Now, it does get easier as time goes on, after you learn some strategies and some of the core principles to work by for your, you know, for your business. So I figured I'd share some of those with you guys. All right, so the first type of difficult client we're going to talk about are cheap clients, and there's a lot of them. So getting people to realize what they're paying for is very difficult, especially when, you ha when they have no clue what goes into it. Many clients are relentless at just trying to haggle, haggle you and save every penny they possibly can. All right, and if you're a freelancer just starting out, you're going to have people that are trying to try to get you to build them a website for free. They'll tell you that uh, it'll give you the you know good experience. They'll give you a good reference. I fell for that in the beginning, and unless they're absolutely ecstatic about your work, they couldn't care less about giving you a reference or helping you out in that way. Um, one important thing to do is to be firm and not let people take advantage of you, uh, but also be open to a little compromise. You want to have self-confidence, but you don't want to sell yourself short. All right, you don't want to overprice your services, but you also don't want to underprice. If you don't feel like you're being fulfilled, um, or you're not being paid what you what you should be getting paid, you're not going to have that ambition and that drive to uh, to build the, the product, you know, in the best way. So some clients are cheap right up front, and they'll try haggling haggling you. But even worse, some people will agree to a price and then later on try and dissect all of your services and work and the time spent and they'll try to accuse you of overcharging them or not not fulfilling what you were supposed to alright so you definitely want to create a specific proposal with the exact work that you're going to be doing and for what price um, you're going to do it for alright that way they can't try to swindle you and, and save a few bucks also make sure you charge them a, a portion up front what I used to do is for projects that were under, uh, let's say, $1,000, I charged them 50% up front and then 50% at the end. And if it was higher than that, higher than 1000 I would do a third at the beginning, a third at midpoint, and then a third at the end. All right, just to make sure that, uh, or just make sure that whatever you do, you make it very clear, verbally as well as in writing. All right, so some clients have absolutely no concept of time. They have no clue what goes into something like a Ruby on Rails application or a Node.js application. Um, the, you know, they'll want a Facebook clone in 30 days for $500, and I'm not exaggerating. I've actually been asked that. Um, they also think that their project is the only one that you're working on, and in reality, you're juggling 10 others just like it, wishing that there was 100 more hours in each day. All right, I used to have people emailing me asking when it'll be done, um, when I clearly gave them, uh, even I even wrote it down, you know, gave them some documentation with a timeline. And it's very difficult to get clients to read or even comprehend details that you give them. Um, they have their own timeline in their head. And they might also be 
uh, or, or not be respectful of your time and your boundaries. They'll call you even after business hours or even on a Sunday or, or a Saturday. Um, some clients make the mistake of thinking that freelancing means that you offer 24-7 support. So to handle these types of people, communication is definitely key. All right, make sure you establish these boundaries, give them a support email, and tell them, you know, you check it Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 or whatever it may be. So always provide a, a time es estimation and always make it longer than you plan, okay? Never shorter. If you estimate a month, tell them six weeks, not three, just to sound better uh, because it'll, it'll bite you in the ass in the long run. I've made that mistake many times. Another important thing is to provide them with the number of revisions that you're willing to do, okay? Because some clients will just try to keep getting more and more out of you, um, not understanding how long it actually takes to revise a website or UI or some functionality, okay? And then a lot of clients have absolutely no clue what they want. And don't get me wrong, there's some that are really good with, uh, with preparation, with their business plan, they have a wireframe, a logo. Those, those are the clients that are, it's really refreshing to, um, to work with. But uh, some of them, you know, they, they have no goals, no examples. I've had people that didn't even have a business name yet. And I would think it would be common sense to at least establish a name and, and some kind of services for your business before contacting a, a web design company. Okay, now some will even ask you to help with this stuff, uh, even though you, you, don't, you don't include any kind of, you know, uh, business consultation services or anything like that, but they'll still try to get that stuff out of you. Um, so be very clear about what your services are. All right, so some of the things that you want to ask for when you're, you know, when you establish initial contact with a, with a possible client and you're trying to get stuff from them, um, you want to ask for examples of other websites that they like in both style and functionality. You want a basic idea of how many pages, what color scheme they want, things like that. And if they don't know, um, tell them to come up with some more information and then give you a call back. Okay, obviously, you know, do that very politely. So if you take it upon yourself to create everything for them, uh, you know, and, and beckon to their every call, there's a huge chance that they'll hate it in the end because they didn't give you enough information to, to figure this stuff out, all right? And even though they made the mistake of not giving you that information, they'll still try to blame you for, uh, for it and, and not want to pay for the services, all right? So make sure you get as much uh, as, as possible before you start any project. So another issue when working with web development services is registering domains and, and also hosting websites. So some clients think that this should all be included in the $100 they want to pay you for building an entire site from scratch. So you have to be very clear on how you're going to handle hosting. Now, when I did this, I was actually a reseller through HostGator. So I could set up their server, I could charge them a monthly fee and all that. If you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But just know that it's a ton of work. So you have to offer support for downtime, um, setting up emails and FTPs and all that crap. You also have to deal a lot with the, the whoever the company is that you're resell, re reselling from. I have no complaints about HostGator. They were really awesome. But all in all, I don't think it's worth it. Um, I would suggest doing something else. Um, so what I would suggest doing is actually getting an affiliate account with some kind of um, shared hosting and then also for VPSs if you're doing you know, Node.js and stuff like that. Um, you know, offer to set up everything for them, uh, you know, with their web development services, but make sure that you, you make it clear that hosting and, and domains are completely separate from, uh, from your services. Okay. So give them, you know, if you want to create the account for them, you can do that and then just give them the login and tell them that they'll have to deal with the hosting company separately, or you could have them pay you, uh, maybe a monthly price for support for that kind of stuff. Just make sure you're crystal clear on your policy. So you may run into the situation where everything is going good, or at least you think it is, and you finally finish the project and then the client is nowhere to be found. They're not responding to your emails, their phone goes right to voicemail, and their final payment is due. All right, so this is one of the reasons that uh, I would always suggest charging at least a portion of the payment up front so they can't completely screw you and have you do all that work for nothing. If they haven't made the final payment, don't send them the completed project and don't put their site, you know, live on the internet 
Also, if email and phone isn't working, try and contact them through other means like social media. Uh, maybe they have an existing website that you can send a contact form submission. All right, now, although it's, it's really frustrating, just know that there is a chance that something could be really wrong. They might have had a, a family emergency. Maybe they had a kid that got hurt or sick. So you do want to be very respectful and understanding. All right, now, some of your clients will vary in terms of, of what they understand and what they don't. So high tech and low tech clients. And there's pros and cons to both, you know, clients knowing a lot or knowing absolutely nothing. If they don't know anything about what goes into building a website or an application, it's very hard to establish pricing and try to justify the, the cost that you're giving them. Um, they might think that building a quality site consists of opening something like Wix and then dragging and dropping a couple elements into the site. Um, they might think that uh, to create, let's say, an iPhone app along with their Android app, it's just a flick of a switch. So um, they might not see why your prices are what they are. And then for clients that do know a lot, for clients that maybe have even done some web development themselves, uh, they sometimes overstep and tell you what tools or languages that you should be using. And they start to criticize parts of your code. I find the best clients to deal with are the ones that understand the basics of how a website is built, but they, they don't think they're smarter than you are. All right, at least at that. So you're going to have clients that have very unrealistic expectations. They think that their idea is going to is going to, you know, make them the next Mark Zuckerberg. So it is a good idea to dream big, but they also have to understand that creating an empire like Facebook is not something that they're going to do overnight. Now, sometimes when a client is pitching their dream to you or, or their, um, you know, their view of, of what's going to happen, you may realize that it's already been done in one way or another, and it's terribly difficult to, to, to let someone down like that, especially if they put a lot of, of time or even money into the idea. It's hard to tell them that it's been done or it just plain sucks. Um, you can try and pitch a tweaked version of what they're looking for if possible, but you really can't blame them. When I was starting out, I had a new idea every day. Um, some of them I put into action. I created a social network for DJs, a web hosting review site, a medical directory, and just endless ideas that I had. Um, I didn't put too much thought into them, but I just kind of jumped in too quick. And some of them did make me a couple bucks, um, but some of them were a complete waste of time. But either way, I did learn from it. All right. I, I did learn that um, you can't just have an idea. You need to really implement it in a successful way. So you have to have mat massive amounts of time to dedicate to it. Um, nothing comes really easy. So I would try and share some of that with, with my clients in a heartfelt way. All right, so let's recap some of the strategies and principles that you can use when dealing with difficult clients. So the most important thing to remember is that communication is key. If you don't have the correct level of communication with your clients, your visions, they're not going to match up to theirs, and there's going to be issues and there's going to be misunderstandings. Okay, so I have an in-depth, uh, or having an in-depth con consultation before you agree to anything is very important. And this includes the work that's going to be done, the price, the time frame, the design, uh, the hosting, and anything else you can think of. Okay, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. You also want to document everything. Okay, don't think that just because you told someone something they're going to remember. Documentation gives you proof of what you said. And uh, some examples of that would be pricing contracts, proposals for projects, plans, hosting agreements, anything that you can think of. Just print it up, put your logo on it, and give it to them in, in, inside of a packet. All right, now if you're just starting out and you're having some of these issues, don't get too discouraged because it does get easier and it does get better. Once you get into a groove, you'll be, you'll be prepared for almost every situation. You'll establish basic pricing, timelines, proposals, all that stuff, and then you can just tweak them a little bit from project to project. All right, and it's really important to know that if you, if you have a client that's really difficult and you feel like you're getting nowhere with them, you don't have to take on that project. Even if it has potential to make you a good chunk of change, sometimes that amount, it's not worth the stress and the aggravation and the time away from your family. So don't be afraid to turn people down. All right, you don't have to be a jerk about it. Just say, you know, I, I have too many projects right now. It's not something that uh, I think that I could deliver on 100%. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. So hopefully you found this uh, somewhat helpful. I really enjoy making these types of videos. I do plan to make more of them. 
Um, so please subscribe, leave a like, follow me on social media, and thanks for watching.